Hello, uh, today I'm going to be talking about neurological disorders in dogs and also the comeback story of Teddy, which is my 17 year old cockapoo. Wow. Okay, so what are some symptoms associated with neurological disorders? So, some are uh, changes in the activity level, reluctance to join in any high energy activity, changes in their sleep pattern, meaning like they're really tired through the day, so they'll definitely sleep or nap more during the day. Uh, wandering around during the night, that relates to the sleep pattern changing. Uh, lack of coordination, vision loss or impairment, convulsive seizures or disorientation and lethargy, which are all of things that Teddy had to deal with throughout his uh, disorder that he had. So what are causes of neurological disorders? So brain atrophy, uh, that's changes in the weight and size of the brain and reduced number of brain cells, which causes a gradual loss of brain function, causing uh, notable old age symptoms, which is dementia, cognitive dys dysfunction syndrome, which is also known as Alzheimer's. Uh, several several micro-sized hemorrhages, which is bleeding, may occur, where blood flow can be disrupted both, which compromises the blood flow and oxygen needed for a healthy brain. Uh, changes of the neurotransmitter levels. So high levels of monamine oxidized B, also known as MAOB, results in lowering of dopamine levels and as Professor Allred said, dopamine is an essential neurotransmitter in the brain. So then there's an imbalance of hormone levels being produced. So this is my 17 year old cockapoo named Teddy. We also call him Lil Chuck. And then this is my other dog, Lily, but she's not really relevant to the story. She's just really cute. Um, so this is Teddy when he was healthy. Uh, he had a great 16 years, but then when he turned about 16 and a half, his life was no longer filled with fancy vacations and human food. Because, um, so I'm the like, last sibling to go to college out of my family. Mm -hmm. And after that, like, it was just my mom and my dad and my two dogs. And my mom would just like travel like all around the country in a car, like road tripping with my dog. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, she just gave him like human food at the dinner table. Like if we were making dinner, like she'd make him like his own plate. Right. I don't know, she likes him more than me sometimes. <laughs> okay, so this is unhealthy Teddy. Uh, you can't really see in this picture, but you can see how his back legs are kind of like they didn't really work, so we had to walk around on his front legs the whole time. It was actually really sad to see. Uh, we had no idea what was going on with him. We just thought it was cancer or bone disease. Uh, my parents took him to a doctor, but yeah, it was really sad. Like He couldn't really move his back legs at all. He couldn't run. It was really hard for him to walk. He kind of just like limped around. Um, so the doctors concluded that he had cerebellar astrocytomus, which isn't very common in dogs. It's very common in uh, like young children. But it's tumors that develop in star-shaped brain cells called astrocytes and grow in the area of the brain called the cerebellum, which is responsible for complex motor functions like coordination and balance and also posture. So he was unable to walk on his hind legs, jump, urinate with his hind leg in the air like most dogs do, or do any of the normal, normal activities that he's previously done. And I think this is interesting because you're big on prefixes. So astro, which is the star shape, so that's where they get it from. A little side note. Um, so this is Teddy at his like absolute worst. This was the last day before I moved in to, uh, before I started my sophomore year. And my parents brought him out when we went to Indiana. You could just see he's really skinny. Like he was like really just small and like just looks sad. And he had these uh, like lumps growing under his eyes. And you could see he's really sad here. I was just like, oh, it's my last day with my dog. So what was treatment? So Teddy had to undergo a very grueling MRI. It was really sad to see. Um, and the doctor said that he could have a $12,000 surgery to have the tumor removed. But my dad was like, absolutely not. Like he's 17 years old, like he'll be fine. Like we'll just like let, let him take his course. Uh, but then the doctors gave us bromocryptine, which is also used to treat uh, Parkinson's. Parkinson's, that's a domain promoter and prolactin secretor. Um, yeah, I thought that was important just because, like, the bromocryptine, it was just supposed to, like, uh, reduce the swelling of the tumor. But the doctors basically said, like, if you don't get the surgery, like, he's going to die. Um, but, so come back, city. So, Teddy is now the happiest, healthiest self and runs around freely. He has full function and mobility in his whole body and is back to his normal self. He turns 18 in November, and the doctors are unsure of how the steroid cured him of his tumor. Some say it was a miracle, others say Teddy did it all on his own. But yeah, the tumor is like completely gone and I just, like no one really knows how it happens because the doctor yeah. said like, he's gonna die, but yeah. he did it himself. And it's one of those cases where 
the bromocryptine, which is used for other things as well, could have had an effect, yeah. or he just spontaneously recovered mm -hmm. due to unknown yeah. reasons or his own body coming back, because sometimes things disappear. Yeah, that's what the doctor said. They were yeah. like, this tumor, or the bromocryptine wasn't supposed to like cure him. Yeah, like, right. It worked, so. But yeah. Yeah. 18, so he's back to his old self. Yeah, he's Man. running around, has like, he's acting like he's like six again.